Okay, so it's either welcome or welcome back. Either way, I appreciate it. Hey, I, I know you guys like that intro. <laughs> I guess I'm a real YouTuber now. But anyway, um, to get into this video, the subject matter is going to be on surnames, swarthy surnames. And yes, this is my second foundational video. And before I get into my material, my presentation, yeah, you guys need to first hear it from an impactful mind himself. This is from Straight Up's channel. And the video is Europeans with Black Names. Check out this presentation here. Okay, so let's get into this next section called Irish, Scottish, and English Names. This is page one. And these names all mean swarthy by being described as dark complexions, black complexions, and brown complexions. Okay, I have listed here the names, meanings, and origins. Some of these names are going to look familiar to you, and then some, of course, will not, if you're not from Ireland, Scotland, or England. Also, as I said in my first video, my pronunciation may be a little bit off, or a lot off, actually, so please don't hold that against me, but uh, I'll do the best that I can. And also, I'm not going to read through all the names on the list. I'll go through some of them. Uh, mostly the ones that I can pronounce. So the first one there is Arthur, and the meaning is very black. The origin is Welsh or Brythonic language. So that immediately reminds me of King Arthur. And if the meaning is very black, hmm, that's something interesting. The second one there in the list is Bran, and the meaning of that is crow or raven. And we should all know that crows and ravens are very black in color. And the origin of that uh, name, Bran, is Welsh. Okay, so I'm going to skip down to Brenna, which means little raven, and that has an Irish origin. Next, we have Cormac, which means raven's son, and that is of Irish origin as well. Now let's skip down to Sierra, which means black or dark, and that's Irish or Gaelic in origin. Then we have Kerwin, which means dark-skinned, and that is Celtic in origin. And then we have, uh, let's go down to Kerry, which means dark, little dark one, or dark princess. Wow. And that's Irish or Gaelic. Then we have the common name that we all know is Blake, which means black. And that's English in origin. And then we will go down to uh, Don Dubon, which means brown or dark. And that's Irish in origin. And then let's go up to the top of the second list, and we have Duff, which means dark, and that's Scottish in origin. Then we have uh, Dugal, which means dark stranger, and that's Scottish in origin. Then we have uh, Dolan, which means dark in Irish, or Irish origin. Then we have Douglas, very common name, and that means dark, and that's Gaelic in origin. And then let's go to Duncan, which means swarthy chief. And we all know that swarthy means dark, uh, dark complexion, black, brown, dark brown, and that's Celtic in origin. Then last on the list there is Kerry, which means dark, and that's Irish in origin. And Kerry is also a very common name. Didn't know it meant dark. And I don't think the parents of these folks are calling them dark in a bad way, like they're a bad person or they have bad intentions or something like that. I think the word dark and the meaning behind these names are a descriptor of what their child looked like or what the family resembled, if it's a family name, because these are first and or last names. Okay, so let's get into the second section under Irish, Scottish, and English names. And these are additional names, meanings, and origins, and this is page two. Okay, so that first one on the list there is Darcy, and that means dark, and it's of Irish origin. And we have Devon which means fawn or little black one, and that's of Irish origin as well. Then we have Donovan, which is little brown, black one, and that's Irish in origin. Then you have Duane, or another spelling of Duane, which means little and dark, which is, which is Irish and Gaelic in origin. Then we have Dunham, which is dark-skinned man, which is Celtic in origin. So there's no ambiguity there. I mean, a dark-skinned man is a dark-skinned man, which is uh, Celtic in origin there. Then we got Duffy, which is dark or black, and that's Irish in origin. Let's go down to uh, Don Chad, which means brown warrior, and that's Scottish in origin. 
And we have Fetchin, which means little raven, and that's Irish in origin. And we have Gethin, which is dark skinned. Again, no ambiguity there. Dark skinned is dark skinned, and that's Welsh in origin. And we have Kern, which means little dark one, and that's Gaelic in origin. Then go, let's go down to uh, uh, Cole, which means swarthy or black, and that's English in origin. Then we have Colton, which means swarthy person or dark. Uh, no ambiguity again there, and that's English. And we have Colby, which is very common these days, and that means dark, and that's Norish. Then we have Cronan, which means the swarthy one, and that's Gaelic in origin. Now let's go up to the uh, second part of the list there. Let's go to Muriel, uh, which means blackbird, and that's English or French. And we have Maguire, which is dun-colored or brown-colored, which is Irish in origin. We have Nigel, which is means black or dark night, and that's English or Latin. And then let's go to Darcy, which is dark, and that's Gaelic in origin. Dwyer, which is black, that's Irish or Gaelic. We have O'Dwyer, which is black, which is Irish in origin. We have Doyle, that's very popular. That means black stranger, and that's Irish or Gaelic in origin. And then we have Donnelly, which is brown or black man, Irish or Celtic in origin. Again, no real ambiguity there. Uh, we have, uh, let's go down to uh, Doltak or Dultak, which means black limbed. And that's Irish in origin again. Black limbed? Wow, okay, that's talking about someone's arms or legs, right? Then we have Rybach, which means swarthy, and that's Irish. And then we have, again, Sierra, different spelling, which means black or dark, and that's Irish in origin. Okay, so you can all go and find these names on the internet. And I obtain these names, meanings, and origins from websites that I have listed there below. I'll read them off to you. Uh, Nameberry.com, BehindTheName.com, BabyNamesDirect.com, babynames.net, mommyin.com, and namenerds.com. And along with searching for these names, I stumbled across quite a few other names and their meanings. And I'm referencing names like uh, Hill, Rivers, Cross, Castle, Knight, Brown, Wolf, Banks. All these names have practical meanings. You know, they live by a hill or on a hill. They live by a river or by, you know, on a river. They, they had crosses by their houses or whatever. Or they built crosses or they lived near castles or built castles. Uh, they were knights. Um, they had brown complexions. Uh, they had a wolf as like their, their family totem or whatever. or That's what they identified with. And then banks would be, you know, living near river banks or something like that. So all of these names had practical meanings and they described something that surrounded the family in some way. Anyway, that's my opinion. That's my theory on it. Uh, I really hope you can look at my research and then go conduct your own to verify this information. And then maybe you'll see that uh, I'll quote the TV judge, Judge Judy, who says, if it doesn't make sense, it's not true. So as I read these names and I think about them, I have to ask myself, why would parents that were white with white children name their children names that mean the opposite of what their child actually looked like. Unless, of course, the parents were actually swarthy, which means their children would be swarthy and their children would be uh, the same as them with dark complexions, dark skin, brown skin, resembling a raven or a crow or uh, anything similar to that. So looking at this section of the video, in the middle there and says three main theories. From what I've seen on the internet and journals or websites, there are three main reasons that are given for reasons that uh, Scottish, Irish, and English people have um, names that mean dark skin, dark complexion, brown, uh, dark, raven, you name it. Uh, the reasons are that the person has dark hair, the person has dark hair and dark eye color, and the person has bad intentions or known for bad deeds. So let's look at the first one there. It says person has dark hair. <clears throat> okay, why that doesn't make sense is that many of these names mean dark complexion, dark skin, uh, dark limbed, black limbed, uh, dark as a raven, 
dark as a crow. And complexion, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, means complexion. You know, the skin color, especially of the face. Okay, so that definition is not going to change. And that's why giving someone a name that means dark complexioned or dark limbed or raven or coal or black, when they were actually, they have a, a, a white or a pale complexion doesn't make any sense. Plus the fact that hair color has nothing to do with complexion. Okay, two different words, two different things. So looking at that second theory there, person has dark hair, dark eye color. Again, it's the same thing. They're speaking about complexion. And many times the definition of the name means dark complexion or dark stranger or that a similar type definition. So saying a person has dark hair and dark eye color and calling them black or a name that means black or dark or brown or raven or just doesn't make sense. And last there, it says person has bad intentions or known for bad deeds. Uh, I think I mentioned this in another video, my first video, and, and I said that why would a parent uh, name their child from the beginning uh, a name that meant uh, someone that had bad intentions or is known for bad deeds? That, again, makes totally no sense at all. Mainly because that child has not established itself <laughs> as a good or bad person. So how are you gonna know what its intentions are? Also, some may say, well, that last theory of the person has bad intentions or known for bad deeds uh, would be reserved for nicknames of adults. But uh, that doesn't make sense as well because these people were known as like Black Hugh, Black Prince, Half, Half Dan the Black, uh, Olaf the Black, they were called these nicknames by their own people that loved them and liked them. So I don't think that they would mean bad intentions or, or people that were known for bad deeds. Again, this is my theory. Um, but again, I'm going to have to go with Judge Judy who says, uh, if it doesn't make sense, it's not true. Okay, everyone, let's move on to this new section called Swarthy Europeans. And as you can see there on the top, I have a chart there with a majority of the human skin tones. Hey, Alex, I'll take what is a cliffhanger for $500. Okay, in all seriousness, go to that man's channel. It's straight up and check out everything. Check out the first to the last video. Subscribe to his channel, like his videos. Don't forget. Guys, now you see why I liken all of this stuff to a battlefield. Because they know this, they know this truth, man. I mean... Feigning ignorance is a popular tactic, but check this out right here. Dougal. Okay, so Anglo-Saxon baby names meaning. Okay, they know that. <laughs> All right, they say dweller by the dark, dark stream right there. But check out the Celtic, Irish, and Scottish meaning right there. Okay, Dougal is dark stranger. Okay, now in Irish. Okay, Dougal is from the Gaelic Dubgal, meaning dark stranger. Dogal, okay, was the nickname the Irish gave to the Vikings. Now, in Scottish, Dougal is dark skinned stranger. So, I mean, it's definitely an intellectual battle right here now. Now, I got another source right here Doyle. Okay, now it says the name Doyle is the anglicized form of the Gaelic Dubgal, Dugal. Okay, and now we all know the elements of Dub meaning black or dark and Gaul, stranger. Now check out, check, check all of this stuff out right here. In Scotland, the same Gaelic name, okay, it produced the surname McDowell. Okay, uh, okay, here we go. I don't want to read all that, but let me go here. All right, but if the original name holders were dark and strange, as their descriptions suggest, then these invaders were either Celts or more likely Danes who were darker than the Norsemen. Come on now. They know this stuff, man, but they feign ignorance. They're not going to tell you what the deal was. But fortunately for us, you know, we have something 
called word witnesses or what is it um the place names you know swarthy place names look for that down the line soon okay now i got two more that i want to just i mean two more things that i found interesting okay so here are some things that i found interesting when it comes to the origins of these names now check out colby right here of course you got the meaning uh swarthy person's settlement right there and but just check this out right here um okay this comes from okay so it's, it's coming from it derives from charcoal so okay they, they say you know it means dark of course when then dark haired that probably came a little later when you know everybody the original folks were cleared out you know okay say uh okay so we, we get the point right there it, can, it comes from coal in reference to a person's complexion how dark it was now that's coal B. now let's go to coal okay so of course you see okay where is it at where is it at where is it at let me go ahead and zoom in okay there we go means coal of course man nickname <laughs> for someone who was dark complexion or coal black okay yep interesting huh well here's a quick hitter right here this is a kiar okay derived from irish kiar meaning black and irish legend all right i'm not gonna read all that but you know you got your answer it means black right there and it has a lot of um variations uh yep yeah, yeah see okay categories black colors dark irish okay okay guys um i do have more names that have some interesting you know um origin side points to it so i'm gonna play that um compilation you know screenshot compilation at the end of this video here right before it you know i sign off okay so here's an interesting article from the guardian.com semantic enigmas quote unquote up here now they're asking okay why do so many african americans have welsh names venus williams colin powell floyd patterson and then they say common thought relates the names to slave owners but there were very few welsh slave owners in the american south most welsh immigrants to the u.s ended up in the steel and coal coal industry in the north okay now just check out the conversation that they're having right here okay oh yeah okay okay all right given that seaports in the south wells were great shipping centers and handle much of the triangular trade it is possible that slaves taken from africa were named after sea captains or crew on the ships that transported them to america with the names of the people who owned the vessels okay it's so a lot of conflating and conjecture up in here so you know let's proceed okay mike okay and this one okay all right says so in Phil in the philadelphia region northeast of course there was a very large welsh community that settled the area okay the towns that bear these old welsh names are also the richest parts of the area to this day and money not geographic location was the only qualification for slave ownership it appears that the question is mistakenly under the impression that slavery was always limited to the agricultural south i am sure that many of the names have thus originated from this area okay so I'm, okay okay all right two qualifications to the previous posters williams and patterson are not exclusively welsh names patterson is a very fairly common scottish name 
a large proportion of African Americans, quote unquote, have Scottish names due partly to the fact that many Scots immigrated or were exiled, deported to the Carolinas after the 1745 uprising. And they know something, but you know, close yet so far. Okay, and many of those who survived became slave owners a generation or so later and gave their names to to their slaves. He, he was almost there, but nope, he tripped at the finish line. Okay, incidentally, in so doing, they were merely passing on the Highland uh, Scottish custom by which all the members of the clan took their surname from the clan chief, whether or not they could trace any blood relation. Okay, so that's interesting because, I mean, it's ironic right there that, that whole point they made was ironic okay um colin powell was born in the u.s but his parents came from the caribbean okay i believe jamaica okay to the u.s okay school kill is school kill is not welsh at all but dutch as are many place names in new york state and elsewhere in the mid-atlantic region Oh, man. Okay, the only... Okay, um, the only thing the slave traders and owners did to the last names of many of their slaves was strip them of it. That's about it. Okay, may I make a suggestion here again? I don't think that black people <laughs> have the last names of the slave owners. Doesn't make sense. Why would anyone want the last name of a family that caused them misery? Black people have had... Okay, uh... Black people have the last names of heroes who were mostly Welsh and Norman. The Welsh were barely involved in slavery. Hmm. So this is a quick hitter right here. Okay, it's from um, ifluther.com. Okay, so they're asking, why is there such a high volume of Welsh surnames among African Americans? All right, all right, all right. So they start off Astro Chuck right there. He says, um, Evans, Jones, Owens, Thomas, Roberts, Hughes, Griffith, Perkins, Powell, Jenkins, Williams are all quite common last names in the African American community. Why is this? I know many black slaves were given the surnames of their owners, but I don't believe there was a high percentage of Welsh that were slave owners. But am I wrong? I mean, he said Welsh, but you know, he meant Welsh. Okay, let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. Okay. Okay, that's what she says right here. Roberts is Welsh. I know. Okay, it's nothing. I don't gain much from. What they're seeing right there. Okay, so they're talking about Jefferson and Washington are common too, and they aren't Welsh names. Okay, Johnson, we got Johnsons popping up all over. They aren't all from the same Johnson family. Then, okay, this guy says. But Jefferson and Johnson were not uncommon slaveholder names. There were many slaves owned by those with British surnames, but not so many Welsh slave owners. Okay, I hope you guys peep in that. Nope. There weren't many Welsh slave owners. So this is like really stumping these people. You know, it's it's killing them, man. They, they want to know. They want to know. Okay. Let me skip, 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 skip. Okay. Now check this out. Okay. If the Welsh were not numerically prominent in the ranks of the slaveholders, how did African Americans come to make common use of Welsh names? In many cases, these surnames just indicate the fact that African Americans 
shared with the Welsh the need to adopt <laughs> fix <laughs> fixed surnames at times when four names commonly used in England had become usual in both groups when fixed surnames became necessary a father's name would tend to become a surname John would become Jones and David Davies I mean Davis or Davies names like this therefore need not necessarily be evidence of a Welsh connection bro if you only knew if you only knew it's kind of like the other way around over time they, they're gonna find out trust they're gonna find out oh here's another one here's another one check this out man straight narrative driven during emancipation the freed slaves took any last name they wanted uh-huh often <laughs> golly man often they took the last name of their former owners what matthew henson was in it all right man that's it with this this is the last one that i'm gonna do right here because this is like intellectually unproductive you know too much conjecture you know and it's kind of aggravating okay um why do so many descend hold on why do so many of the descendants of slaves in the usa have welsh surnames okay jeez man Okay, so Sarah Matthews, she is just stumped by this occurrence. Okay, um, she says it's difficult to argue that list of surnames. Okay, you know, of course, you know what you're gonna get right here. Okay, this dude, Michael Green, just like okay, narrative, narrative, conflating, conjecture, all that stuff. Okay. Let's get to the real point right here. This whole slave master, you know, lent his last name to the slave or the slave took the slave master's last name and anybody else, you know, it's just conjecture, explaining things away. Now, Jamal Bradley, I like what he says because he's on the mark right here. Okay. Okay, he says, uh, I feel this is more American folklore rather than something based on fact. It's quite possible that many did, but according to varying accounts, however, post-slavery, many did not. If we look at, hold on, where am I at? Okay, if we look at some of the most well-known slaves or those who escaped slavery, many of them don't have the name of their slave masters. Now, this is good right here. Examples. Frederick Douglass Bailey. Okay, he was owned by the Old and House families. Harriet Tubman, owned by the Thompson and Broadus or Brodus family. Okay, Sojourner Truth. Born to parents with the last name Bomb Free. Free sold to a man named Hardenberg then sold to others named Neely okay is it Scriver and Dumont other examples are Booker T. Washington who was owned by the Burroughs family and an interesting point here as with others is that his likely father was the slave master and he still didn't have the slave name. This is a key point because the master raping women and impregnating them. Oh snap, I just said something. <laughs> okay. I, I'll bleep it out. Okay, impregnating them. Why would they also allow them to keep the family name? Why would his wife and other relatives who allowed it to go on but publicly frowned on it okay you can let me go up a little more and you can look through the biographies of numerous other slaves and find their names don't match up with match up with that of the master 
Now, of course, some do, but a good number don't. And if we go back to the fact that people had choice, had the choice to change their names after slavery, it shows that the idea that most of us have slave names is more fiction. Now, you hit the nail on the head, sir. Good job, good job, good job. Okay, I had one more video on this, but man, this is a... It's just too much, too much. 90% of this stuff is, you know, conjecture and conflating and, you know, a lot of folklore. And I'm done with that, that portion. Shoot, I even have a video where it's this British guy. He was talking about the name Washington and how it's been, how it's a black name and all that stuff now. And, you know... I don't know. I just don't have a heart for that because it's, you know, the point has been made, man. These surnames right here, they're, um, they're not from a slave master, you know, because that came later, way later. These surnames, you know, the origin is talking about the complexion most of the time. Okay, so that's about it. Okay, guys, in my logo video, I was making some metaphorical um, use of terminology, you know, like sword strikes, spear thrust and everything. Well, here's another or a couple of logical cuts and logical strikes for you guys right here. This is a, another straight up um, clip right here, and it's taken from the video, his video, the Black Southern Confederacy. But check out this logic here. Okay. All right, I'm going to take us away from these articles for a minute so I can show you real quick that Mr. Stevens' swarthy complexion and basically all swarthy complexions generally refer to complexions assigned to people of color. Let me show you real quick what I mean. Again, I'm going to preface this. I'm not speaking about white people with tans. There's a huge difference. And as Judge Judy says, let's not play with each other. Now, I have plenty of viewers commenting on various videos stating that swarthy complexions are not assigned to people of color. They believe that swarthy complexions refer to either white people with dark hair and dark eyes or white people that have tans from being outdoors. I'm not blaming these commenters for believing as they do because they have been subject to the same rewritten history we all have been taught. However, I'm gonna debunk that false narrative right now. I'm gonna go through a couple examples real quick. Let's look at this article from the Indianapolis Journal dated July 12, 1895, page four, fifth column under the title, About People and Things. Beginning in the third paragraph, it states, Mrs. Anna R. Woodby of Omaha, described as a swarthy colored woman, has been named by the prohibitionists as one of the candidates for the regents of the state university. Now, this next article is from the Indianapolis newspaper, dated September 10, 1891, page two, fourth column. The title of this article is, The Asphalt Colored Hands Demand $1.75 Per Day for Their Labor. So the paragraph begins, at one o'clock today, about 100 swarthy Negro laborers employed to lay concrete work on the Virginia Avenue asphalt pavement threw down their tools and quit work. Okay, moving on. You'll love this one. This article is from the Savannah Morning Newspaper dated February 21st, 1904, page 30, second to the last column. The title of this article is The Romantic Story of the Douglas Family. I'm going to skip down to the fifth paragraph where it reads, being desirous of seeing the one who had done so signaling a service, the man was pointed out to the king by his color or complexion. In these words of the Gaelic tongue, show told the glass, or behold the swarthy colored man. Hence he was named show told the Douglas. The king royally rewarded him with grants of land and created him Lord of Douglas. Well, that was interesting, don't you think? Keep in mind, this is a major southern newspaper in Georgia, and it's uh, 1904. Okay, so this next article is from the Durham Daily Globe, dated October 23rd, 1893, page one, third column. The title of this article is People Who Come and Go, Brief Brevities of Interest to All Readers of the Globe. Skipping down to the third paragraph, it reads, Solomon Justice, another swarthy African, was charged with violating a city ordinance, but was not found guilty, so went on his way rejoicing. Again, this is another Southern newspaper, this one from Durham, North Carolina, in the year 1893. 
Here's the last example I'm going to share because I want to get back to the main subject of this video. This article is from the New Albany Daily Ledger, dated May 19, 1860, page 2, second column. This short article reads, It appears that the contest for vice president in the Republican convention was between Hannibal Hamlin and Cassius M. Clay, and the former succeeded. This was natural, we suppose. Hannibal of old, in whose honor Hamlin was named, was a swarthy African, while Cassius was nothing but a Roman and a white man. So let's look at this. According to this editor, and I've read this before, Hannibal Hamlin, Abraham Lincoln's vice president, was named after a swarthy African. Why would you name a white man after a black man? Well, if you've seen my prior video, I assert that Hamlin was a black man. You also saw where the editor states, this was natural, we suppose. I believe he made that statement because Hamlin was black, but also because black men were numerous in the Republican Party at that time. So basically, the editor jumps to a conclusion thinking that Hamlin was only voted in by the Republican Party at the convention because he not only is he a black man, but he has a black man's name where his opponent was named after a white man. So, of course, they're not going to choose him. So why would this editor have this sarcastic view? Well, here's an interesting fact, and I did a little digging. According to the Carnegie Center for Arts and History, they state that this newspaper editor sided heavily with the Southern cause yet he still assigned the term swarthy to an African man. So my whole point here with these particular articles is to point out that the term swarthy was used to describe dark-skinned people, whether they be Africans, Europeans of color, or any dark-skinned individuals. Okay, that was well said, well said, well stated. I could not have said that better myself. You know, I appreciate Straight Up for letting me um, you know, use his material, his presentations. Okay. As was promised, I do want to share the wealth. Here's a little compilation of these uh, surnames that I, you know, came across. You know, you can find some interesting points in here for yourself. And um, here we go. All right, folks, we've reached that point where we are approaching the end. And before I end, I wanted to give my final thoughts, per se. Now, this video is talking about, I guess, surnames and other names. Just think of it like this, man. Think of it, that information as the correct oil or the correct fuel to put in your car, right? Now, a car cannot function 
properly if you put the wrong fuel and definitely the wrong oil in the car you know you're gonna have problems you can't function correctly if you put the wrong tires on your car it's not going to perform you know at its best you know it's not going to perform up to the capabilities that it was meant to perform to you know if you put the wrong engine parts or the wrong um what else you know if, if you're just off now that's that's how we are today we're taking in the wrong information we're believing the wrong information you know it's just like you put the wrong size tires on your car and i mean shoot you're gonna have a blowout probably but them tires gonna just wear out and bald quickly you know especially you think think of it as a bugatti veyron or a bugatti chiron um being tuned tuned down from 1001 horsepower to like 200 or 300 or even 400 horsepower now i was talking about this concept with somebody at work and he was like man well, but don't you believe in equality okay equality is good equality and opportunity you know but when you just like a race man you know a bugatti veyron is not operating to its capabilities you know it's operating to its tuned down settings and it's having a hard time with souped up mustangs souped up camaros and um souped up mercedes benzes and um, bmws that shouldn't happen now again equality is okay we're both on the same track we both can race each other but it's not it's not equality when you're tuned down and you have the bad fuel and bad oil engine oil and you're trying to operate you're not operating properly and that's the key point right here this information is meant to i guess give you that fuel or oil from an intellectual standpoint mental you know academically and have us operate or take the first steps so that we can operate to our full capabilities because um you know all these movies and different narratives and tv shows and books and news reports and all that that's not us man that's not us operating to our full capabilities and that's the key to this thing and that's that's what i'm trying to get us on you know and why, why pe some people may be like okay why, why are you talking about europe well europe is that big bully on the street you know from a um just figuratively you know you you take out that bully you knock that bully out on the street and have him slumped over hey his crew is gonna fear you you know everybody else gonna see him like oh man he knows what he's doing just like with this information i mean europe has been co-opted you know and i mean just bring out this old information it's just like going back to that bugatti um example you know say 100 years from now somebody is um racing with a bugatti veyron and it's it's a tuned down version you know and it only puts out what 400 maybe 350 horsepower okay now and he's he's it's been like that for like 75 years but the guy you know he owns it 100 years later now say if somebody comes and shows video clips newspapers um articles and things that that's showing like the debut of that bugatti veyron they're showing okay 1000 you know one horsepower they're showing video clips of this car bugatti you know killing lamborghinis in the race you know beating down um what ferraris and things and then they show the newspaper articles man that's showing hey it can be tuned even higher you know it's the first production car with you know 1001 horsepower and then this guy up here you know going down the line that owns a tuned down bugatti veyron he's gonna look and be like man you know what all this time i've been operating a car that is tuned down and not properly running Whew. guess what he's gonna do he's gonna work to tune that car back to 1001 horsepower so he can start winning some races man so that's that's what this information is about that's what this channel is um aimed at putting you back so you can operate your full capabilities 
it's not about any race races i did no it's not about that it's about to, to tune you back to your proper settings and with that i'm gone